Today's video is sponsored by Sweetwater Sound. Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Travis Dykes. And today we're going over four essential types of pedals that I believe every bass player needs. So let's jump into it. Over the years that I've been in the professional industry, I have only used maybe like two pedals, three pedals max when it comes to playing. But nowadays, it has become like a thing where a lot of artists that I play with and a lot of artists that I come in contact with want different sounds so it doesn't just sound like a plain Jane type bass tone. Even if the bass tone is crispy, some people are just like, I want it to sound like a synth bass or I want it to sound like this or I want it to sound like a guitar at this moment. So having versatility and creating tones and being able to capture that is very, very crucial when it comes to bass nowadays. So before we get into the pedals, I just wanna give you a little preface that all these pedals that I'm showing today are not ones I'm like, you have to get this one, you have to get this one. So if you don't like any of these particular pedals, just note that and honestly, do some research and find what the best one is for you. So the first pedal that every bass player should have is a bass DI. Honestly, even if you didn't have enough money to get other pedals, if you invest in a great bass DI, it will literally change your life. It will change your, you know, when you travel or if you play at church or, you know, if you play in sessions, you have something to play through that has good tone that can really shape it really well. Even if you don't have any other effects pedals, if you get this one first, it can change everything. Now, the one we're gonna be using today is gonna be the Radial Bass Bone OD, which OD means overdrive. So what's really cool, this is one that I've been playing around with and it's really, really dope. And just to preface, I'm not gonna go really in depth into all the features of this. I'm just gonna go into just a couple of things I think is really cool, which is it's got two inputs. So like if you have like your regular, just string bass, regular bass, and a synth bass, you can put them both in at the same time and leave them plugged in and also control the tones out of both of them and cut them on and switch between them and all that kind of stuff. You actually have an overdrive on here as well and just a whole lot of different things. Now, not saying you have to use this DI, you can honestly use any other DI. This is just one that we're using for this video. Another DI that's really simple that you can use is like this RNDI. Plug it in, it's just like a normal DI you would see just like on a stage or anything like that. But it has incredible tone and it sounds really, really great. If you wanna buy something that's immediately gonna change your tone completely, and you're just like, you know, I don't have enough money to get three or four pedals, spend the money and get a great bass DI. I, I cannot stress that enough. So now the second type of pedal I feel like every bass player needs is a tuner pedal. Now, today I'm looking at this Diadario tuner pedal, which is really, really cool. I just picked it up not too long ago, and man, it's really cool. It's got a digital screen, which I'll show you later. Honestly, any tuner would work. It doesn't really necessarily have to be the Diadario, but I just say this is a really great one. But having a tuner is so vital when it comes to playing live, because a lot of these tuners, you click this button and it mutes the signal. So like, if you have an active bass, if you leave it plugged in for long, it's gonna run that battery out that's in your bass. But if you have a tuner and you can just click it off and just unplug it, it won't use that battery for long. But at least that's always what I've done over the years. But also just being able to see and mute your signal and be able to tune in the middle of a song, if something gets out of tune, if you accidentally hit one of the tuners or something like that, having a tuning pedal is so, so, so vital. So now number three, which is going to be a compressor. Now, a compressor is something that I will say is definitely misused quite a bit when it comes to bass players. I've seen a lot of people use compressors and just really destroy their tone, not in a good way. I will say a compressor is very great if you wanna have consistent volume when it comes to your notes, because a lot of times when you don't play with a compressor, you may play a note and it's like really, really soft and the next note's really, really loud. So for the sound guy, he's having to put a compressor in there to you know, make it to where it's even to where, so he can push up the volume of everything at the same you know, point. But having this for yourself is very, very vital, at least to me. I've had a compressor ever since I got into professional industry. I felt like I've had to have one in some kind of sense because especially when you slap, this is like kind of the key to having your slap tone sound a little bit more even. And so what I do 
is I get some, I don't necessarily, this is a guitar compressor, which you don't necessarily always have to have a bass compressor. It does the same thing. You just have to make sure you dial it in and make sure it has the right tone you want because a lot of compressors have different tones. This is one called the Warden by Earthquaker Devices. If you wanna have a unique tone or if you wanna have something different than everybody else, check out some guitar pedals because some of these actually work really well. This one actually is a dope one that I've checked out already and it really works really well, but you have to make sure you dial it in to where it's not too much. Because the thing is with compressors, it can destroy your tone just as much as it helps it. You wanna have it light when you have it on. And if you have it light, it really kind of helps make your tone even, but also lets the sound guy, if he wants to put a compressor in there, or just something on there, it's not gonna hurt your tone or it's not gonna like hurt him being able to put something on it. So just note that when it comes to having a compressor. So now the fourth and last type of pedal that every bass player should have is a distortion pedal. Distortion. Depending on the style of music, this can be a life saver, especially if you're doing any type of recording or any type of like live situation. You're playing with a lot of different instruments. Distortion can really help. Now here's, this is another guitar distortion. Um, this is called the Al, I'm gonna mess this up so bad. Just Al Capulco Gold. I'll probably just mess that up so bad, but it's by Earthquaker Devices as well. It is a pretty dummy proof <laughs> You know, distortion pedal has just got one knob. Let's just say I wasn't expecting how gritty and how, you know, distorted it actually would be. And so just note, this is the reason why you check out guitar pedals and figure out which what right one for you. Um, this one may be a little too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and say right now, it's a little, when I tried it out, it was a little bit much for, uh, for bass, <laughs> I would say. So just know that like, you know, you can use guitar pedals it's just, uh, just, you just have to try them out first. But now the reason why distortion is important is so if you're playing like rock or you're playing CCM, uh, which is contemporary Christian music, or if you're playing like, you know, anything that's like, kind of has like a little bit of a Coldplay-ish vibe or stuff like that. Distortion is really great for bass because what it does is that if you're playing with other instruments, it kind of makes your bass poke out a little bit without really making the tone sound bad or sound like, ooh, that sounds like a guitar. No, like if you just use just a little bit, it kind of helps poke your bass through a mix, especially with other instruments. So now I've learned this by working with a lot of audio guys and professional you know, audio guys that they were just like, I just added a little distortion to your tone and it just really just made it sit well. And I was like, why? Why did you add distortion? <laughs> and then he, they let me hear a recording of my bass with distortion. And I was like, oh, wow, that sounds like really good. But just note it's with certain styles of music. It's not with every style. I wouldn't use a distortion on like gospel or even like funk per se. But if that's your vibe, if you want to create something that's cool like that, feel free. Like. And also too, like on my, the radio bass bone, like it has an overdrive on it and it sounds really good. So honestly, if you want it just like a little overdrive, you know, instead of just like a crazy distortion, like, you know, this one, get something like a bass bone that has like a distortion built in. There's other bass DIs that have distortions built in. And so just note that it doesn't have to be a separate thing if it's already all in one DI. Get it, I mean, why not? <laughs> Just recently, I got this pedal board right here, which is the D'Addario Expand, or I mean, it's called XPND, which really is just abbreviation for expand. But the reason why it's so cool is that it fits in like a guitar tick. Pull up on these levers right here. You can expand this to double its length. Now, I have enough space to put tons of pedals on here. This is uh, what we're gonna be using to put the pedals on. It's really, really solid. Uh, and all these different products and things that I'm using, if you wanna check them out, check out in the link in the description. I'll have the links to everything. So another really cool thing that we're gonna be using to power the pedals today is this thing called a 529i. It's a rechargeable power supply to power your pedals. So it's wireless, you don't have to plug it in and it powers just about any nine volt pedal you plug into it or any that 500 milliamp or 1000 milliamp pedal, which is really, really sick. So that means that you can go on a stage and be able to go almost completely wireless 
with, with your power if there's not a lot of power on stage. And also, it could also charge your phone or anything going through a USB. So if you have doubts and you're like, I don't know if I wanna use a, re a battery supply or you know rechargeable battery supply for my pedals. Dude, this thing really lasts. I used it yesterday when I was playing uh, in a church service. I had it on the whole time. And then also I went and used it for my shoot today. And it's only went down like one notch. And I powered like three or four pedals with it. And it's, dude, it's sick. So make sure you go check it out. Link to this will be in the description below. But as far as what I do on uh, the road or when I'm like playing with pedals, this is like the, the routing that I've used for years. So the rule of thumb is that your tuner is the one that you start off with and your preamp DI or wherever's going directly to the system is at the end. And then any effects are in the middle. Now, when it comes to just kind of understanding like what is uh, the best order of your effects, that's totally dependent on you. And so like for me, I, I usually, this is something I've always done is put the distortion before the compression. This is just a tone I like. Sometimes people do it opposite way, but just figure out what you like and use that. And this is also how the everything's powered except for this pedal. Um, don't want to lie to you guys. This pedal uh, has 15 volt DC, which is not supported by this, which is actually an odd power source. So. Don't be, you know, alarmed or anything, but that is just, it's just one power cable, literally, for this entire board so far. Because this thing, usually if, if this was just like a normal nine volt pedal, then this would power it. And this whole thing would be like wireless, except for just going to the system right here. So now let's check out how these pedals sound. So the main thing when it comes to having pedals is what exactly are you playing and also how consistent do you want your tone to be? Now, if you're trying to figure out what kind of DI pedals you need, because honestly, this is like one of the most essential pedals to get, even before you get any other type of effects, getting the right DI can change your tone immediately. If you're trying to figure that out, feel free to check out this video right here and it will give you everything you need to know about some of the best DIs. Yeah. 